All right, peace and greetings, YouTubers. Or to be honest, I don't know how peaceful this video is going to be. Sometimes the peace is a little limited depending on the subject matter. We'll see where it goes. But for the sake of my sanity and just for some clarification purposes, let me just ask. So y'all are still mad. Like, still mad mad. Like, not even just mad because... Mad was three or four years ago when they announced this movie and said that Holly Bailey was going to be playing Ariel. You know, that was mad and y'all fussed and complained. I think we made a video about it and I thought time had moved on and folks had made their peace with it. But then I look on social media and you would have thought the world ended. Like you would have thought Mountain Dew went out of business the way folks was acting. And so, you know, I had been minding my what's left of the summer business and I happened to be on social media and I saw that the trailer had been released or at least some kind of sneak peek or a snippet and it shows Holly Bailey singing one of the songs from the movie. You know, she sounds amazing. Voice of an angel. When I saw it, I was like, yes, this movie's perfect for her. The kids are really gonna love this. This is gonna be a really good one. And you know, mainly the backlash is the fact that people feel that the actress playing Ariel should be white. They don't want it to be Ari or they don't want it to be Holly Bailey because she's black and they made a whole hoopla about it. And so, you know, once the trailer came out, it was like all hell broke loose on social media and people start writing dissertations and think pieces and there's all this rage and folks are literally just, just enraged and just pissed off and they're gonna boycott and I'm done with Disney. I'm, I'm just done. This, this is it. I'm done. I'm done. And I'm just like, it's so interesting because Folks will run around and parade all day about how colorblind they are. And mind you, there's a conversation to be had about colorblind anyway. That's another issue I have with folks. But anyway, folks will claim to be colorblind all day. Oh, we all bleed the same. We're all human. Oh, content of our character. You know, they love that Martin Luther King line. That's the one line everybody know. You know what I mean? But then it's, it's kind of like that Bone Thugs and Harmony song, Crossroads. Folks don't know what they're saying for most of the verses, but everybody has down the Miss My Uncle Charles y'all line. That's the one line they got. That's how folks are when it comes to Martin Luther King. When racist folks need to justify something, they will throw in the Martin Luther King line. But anyway, folks are colorblind all day until the color shows up. Then they get to the seething and shaking and just, like just, just losing it. I'm like, are y'all good? And so yeah, folks are still pissed about this movie. And really, it's to the point where you have people with editing software that have gone and literally edited the trailer to make Holly Bailey appear as a white woman. Or, you know, made different edits. See how much better it looks already? E even the color is more vibrant. I'm just like, y'all are some terrible people. <laughs> y'all are some terrible people. You know what I mean? And really, I wasn't even going to make a video about this until I saw that people had been harassing Holly Bailey online and like, you know, stalking her social media. Even the YouTube trailer, like there's like millions of dislikes on it. I'm like, you people are loony as hell. Like of all the things that <laughs> I, I, I just can't. And it's so funny because folks are like, no, this is going to ruin our childhood. It's going to ruin our innocence. It's going to ruin what we have. And I'm like, y'all got like 859 princesses. I think Black folks got, what, one? And she had to be a frog. And hell, I remember watching the movie. Like, I think five minutes in, she turned into a frog. I went to get some popcorn and I came back and she was hopping. I was like, wait, I don't even think I got to see her wear the, the princess dress and spin around. She did one song. And she was hopping. And mind you, I don't, like I said, I think they had her wearing some, some, some rags or something. She was looking like the hell. I said, okay, well, this is the one movie we going to get. And they didn't even make that one 3D. That was like 2D. They said, we ain't about to spend no money on that here. This is what y'all get. Keep it and keep it moving. And so it, it's so interesting. Um, folks are like seething about this. And it just, it just goes to show like folks cannot stand when black folks are happy or when black folks celebrate anything, when black folks get it. Like there's certain things they don't like. They, folks get mad when black folks are having fun. They get mad when black folks get something that folks think black people don't deserve because, again, people are in this space where they think they are authoritative figures and can decipher and determine what it is that people deserve, right? And they really can't stand when black folks don't care about something that they're passionate about. Kind of like when the queen died. You know what I mean? Like folks were very livid and irate because there were a lot of people in the black community that weren't super pressed about the queen. You know, it's kind of like, okay, you know, it's sad that people lose a relative here and there, but what y'all want us to do? Like, that whole monarchy represents literally everything wrong with the world. You know what I mean? A monarchy that pretty much colonized all but 22 countries around the world. Millions of people dead. And not even just the British monarchy, but the, the, the Italian ones, the Spanish ones, the German ones. All of them. Like, what y'all want us to do? Sorry, like, folks were acting like we, we set puppies on fire because we weren't mourning the queen. Like, sorry, that's not really, that ain't in our ministry. Y'all can go ahead and stand out in the line for, for 36 hours to see the casket. Go ahead and be my guest. But they, you know, the queen just was not something we, I can't say we because some folks were, but at least for me and mine, I was impressed about. But yeah, folks, there's just certain things folks cannot stand. And so the biggest argument I've seen is, you know, folks kept saying, well, it's European folklore and it's disrespectful to the culture of the blah, 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 blah. And what I find so interesting is like, you know, 
Y'all have no problem being historically inaccurate about everything else. The history books, what we portray in media, all of that. But European folklore is where y'all draw the line. That's where it's just unacceptable. Y'all don't even want the history books to be accurate. That's why you got these whole anti-CRT movements. And you've redefined what CRT is to the point where anything that, that highlights the cultural contributions of anybody that's not white is a problem. And anything that challenges or criticizes, you know, the white power structure that exists within the world, all of a sudden that's a problem. So all of that, y'all, y'all, you know, that right there, it's fine to go ahead and manipulate history books and paint things out to be not true so that you can keep people in bubbles of stupidity so that you can continue to push the narrative of American excellence, you know, push the narrative of, you know, just the, the superiority of America and, you know, just the prosperity that we have there, American exceptionalism, y'all, all of that's fine, but European folklore is where you draw the line. I mean, it's just, it's just out of control. And so I'm like, okay, so this, this story about some mermaid, mind you, it's a mermaid. It ain't a real person. This mermaid who has a dad that's Greek. And a best friend that's a crab that's, you know, from the Caribbean. I'm just like, y'all, okay. Interesting. I can't. I, 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 I honestly, I can't. It's just so interesting because y'all will be silent on anything oppressive all day. All the oppressions and structural things that take place that affect people globally, y'all are silent on. Especially if it's something that deals with black folks collectively. You know, all of that, y'all are silent. But all of a sudden, you know, it comes to, to European folklore. Now you, you got to raise your voice. Where y'all been at for everything else? Like, I, I can't, you know what I mean? And I think some of it is it's to the point where, like, folks are acting as if Holly ba Bailey getting this role, like, this is reparations for black folks or something. Like, all of a sudden, this is going to fix the problems because at the end of the day, all the money's still going to Disney. It's still going to line the pockets of wealthy white folks anyway. Like, Holly's just the representation that they get. Representation isn't anything tangible. But even that little bit, y'all don't want to give folks. Y'all get pissed about that. It's just so interesting because a lot of y'all want to center yourselves in everything until it's time for the criticism. Then that's when you want to draw the line. You know, you want to be the center of everything. Everything has to be to the standard of how you see the world through the lens of whiteness. And then as soon as criticism shows up, then all of a sudden you want to pull back. Then all of a sudden it's the conversations about unity and we got to come together. You know, you start talking about how do you make whole the people who've been victims to structural systems of oppression. Then all of a sudden they, now y'all y'all don't got no opinion. Now it's unity. We need to just come together. You know, we, we, we need to just see the good in people. And I'm like, F all that because because when y'all go vote, you vote with rage. So like, I don't know what this is. And now it's to the point where a kid's movie, y'all will politicize a kid's movie. Get rage about something that, it's a kid's movie that has an element of innocence. Kids don't care. They just want to hear the songs and, and see the colors and they're gonna leave out the movie theater skipping, okay? If that was the case, like if that wasn't the case, kids would hate movies like Mulan and Pocahontas and all the other ones where the characters are not white. But again, people want to be the center of everything until the criticism shows up. And then all of a sudden, the, the fire is too hot in the kitchen. And now we, you're just doing too much, I'm uncomfortable. You know, now all of a sudden policy gets put into play. And now you have the Stop Woke Act in Florida. You know what I mean? That's how, those are the games that y'all like to play. And so it's it's just so interesting because I'm just like, what's in the water with some of y'all? Y'all y'all are weird. Some of y'all are really weird. Sorry, you, you just are. And by the way, because there's going to be black folks who come on here and also fight me about this and want to bring up the European folklore and accuracy and blah, 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 blah. Listen, understand that you can sit here and play their same little silly game, but understand you don't win anything in the end. And even if you think you've won, really the games that you won go to them because you're playing into that system that already exists. But carry on, do you, okay? Hopefully you get a white appreciation certificate in the mail. But it's just so funny because, you know, when I look back at what happens in entertainment and in film and in television, if we want to sit here and harp on the historical inaccur inaccuracies of The Little Mermaid, which again is something that is fictional and not real, then that means we need to go and we need to take a look at everything else that's happened in Hollywood. And we could be here all day in regards to how much Hollywood has gotten wrong, especially in regards to race and in regards to narratives. I'm just like, are you, are you, are you kidding me? Like, I could understand maybe if this was Snow White, because at least Snow White was descriptive. You know, oh, you know, hair like ebony, skin white as snow. And I'm like, if her skin is white as snow, you need to take her to the hospital because I think she's dying. Like, she's a little too pale. That doesn't sound right. Somebody go ahead and, you know, get, get, get one of the machines. You know, we need to make sure we ain't having, like, heart palpitations or something. But anyway, um, it, it, it's just so interesting because when we talk about historical inaccuracies, it's like, y'all made Pocahontas a love story. You know what I mean? When you really talk about the logistics of what happened during that time period and the people who were affected, that was not a love story. That was a little girl and an old man and you, we saw what happened, all right? Or even like when we get out of Disney, we talk about things that are now being pushed as like historically accurate. Or you talk about something like the Captain Phillips movie. You know, it's painted as this movie where you have these American heroes who just were attacked by these Somali pirates who were violent and you know, 
when in reality, when you talk about the logistics of why they even had to have pirates in the waters, it was because you had so many corporations and countries illegally going into their waters and overfishing the water to the point where it affects the livelihood of the people living in the region. And now you got people starving. And so now you have people who literally become protectors of their water so that the people from where they come from can still have their livelihood. But of course, in American media, we turn all that around and make it, you know, a, a, a rags to riches war American hero story. And so now all of a sudden, an entire narrative have, has been warped to fit, you know, a story that is marketable to American audiences. You know what I mean? Or even <laughs> Exodus. I don't even want to talk about the movie. Let's just look at the pictures. I don't know who y'all were trying to fool. So again, I think the issue that I just find so funny is people are mad about this Little Mermaid movie because of the imaging. And the beef that I more so have is I, the, when imaging is one piece, but it's funny that you guys are silent when it comes to how many narratives that y'all love to change in regards to history. So like even with movies like any kind of movie, especially if it's something like from back in the day that highlights a rags to riches story or any kind of story where it's, you know, something out of the civil rights era or something with a black person or somebody who was not white that, that, that made it and became successful. There's always been this movement to always have the white savior complex or create a character that wasn't even historically accurate or even existed just to paint that picture and make audiences more comfortable with what happened in the past so people don't have to feel as accountable because they can claim and say, oh, I'm like the good guy in the movie. I'm not like those other ones. So even something like the Jesse Owens movie, like the, the movie made him almost seem just in, in, just incompetent. Like he just didn't know how to do anything. He couldn't do anything unless the white guy told him to. And it's like, bruh, you just gotta run. Hidden Figures is another example where you have the scene with Taraji and she's pissed off because you know, it's like the 1960s and she's at NASA and she was late. And she was late because she had to go all the way to the bathroom on the other side of the campus. And so she has this great monologue and lights up everybody about just how stupid they are and how even when she makes the coffee, nobody wants to touch the coffee pot because she touched it. And then there's that scene where the guy goes and he desegregates the bathrooms. And in reality, that never happened. However, for the movie, yeah, let's change it all around because, again, it will make audiences more comfortable with the reality of their history because it was just that oppressive. But if we can change it and make it seem a little bit nicer, it won't be as bad because now it shows that we helped those people get to where they are because we're the good guys. Like, that's literally there. Same thing with that Harriet Tubman movie. Same thing. A whole character that's been created and it's to the point where Harriet was almost caught. And what did the white guy say? Just go. Just go. I'm like... Okay, and, and this is why we have the narrative today where in history books, people think that people in the North really were willing to die for black people to be free. Like, that's really where we're at now, where sometimes when I'm having some of these conversations in regards to race, people will be like, you don't realize hundreds of thousands of white men died so that you can be free. I was like, they did not die because they felt bad for black people. But understand that. Go back and read the books, please. Try again. You know what I mean? Or even the blind side. You know, the, the great white savior complex movie with the, the white lady that adopts the, the inner city black kid and he becomes an NFL player. But the scene where she goes and she confronts the people in the neighborhood, you know, she goes back to the hood and everything. And she has that line where she just like cusses the people out. You know, she calls them to be where in response to what they called her. And, you know, she's, you know, I pray with the DA and I'm a member of the NRA and I'm always packing. I said, what white woman is going to go to the hood and say that to a bunch of black men? You, Okay, all right, like y'all just, anything. Long story short, I'm gonna tell y'all what y'all tell black folks when we complain about the politics in this country and y'all tell us to go back to Africa. You know what, why don't you make your own movie? You don't like it, make your own movie. You know what I mean? And so it's just the stupidity of all the things to be that pressed about. Let it go, it's a kid's movie. Let the kids have their innocence. Y'all always wanna talk about how we need to fix the problems in the world, but the adults keep getting in the way of what the children are trying to aspire to be. And that's why y'all are going out here and changing the curriculums in the schools and, and making all these new laws and making everything punitive. Because again, you recognize some of y'all history ain't too hot and you don't want everybody to know all of that and everything again you want to center yourselves and everything and be seen as the standard because again the idea of American exceptionalism exists through a lens of whiteness and so anything that challenges that all of a sudden is a problem that's why y'all pissed at Holly Bailey's playing this role side note I wonder what it would have been like if social media was out when that Cinderella movie came out the one with uh, Brandy and Whitney Houston you know because they had like the it was kind of like an all-inclusive cast where it was supposed to represent everybody. So, you know, it was like the king was a white guy, the queen was Whoopi Goldberg, um, the prince was Asian, the stepmother was white, one of the stepsisters was white, one of the stepsisters was black, and they tried to have this whole collage of just different groups of people from different backgrounds. You know, it came out really well, but I wonder what the reaction would have been back then had social media existed. I was a little too young to remember the adult conversations around the film, but it's interesting to see what it is that people are pressed about. So again, if you want to rant about historical inaccuracies, you know, I don't know if the fictional 
children's movie based on European folklore is the example you want to latch onto in regards of proving your point because now you just look a little chaotic. Anyway, I'll be watching the movie. Um, <laughs> so we'll see how this all unfolds. If you're mad, I don't know what to tell you. It is what it is. You'll be okay. I promise you'll live to see another day. Like y'all are over here madder than the folks from January 6th. Get it together. It's a kid's movie. Anyway, I'm out. Sherry Two Cents, subscribe. Baby, get the keys and go. Up to the stars, who you